Hey everyone, welcome to my channel, it's me GamerTorque and I thought I needed to get my opinions out there on the very controversial decision and the actual facts revolving around it of course, that is the Super Sonic DLC for Sonic Forces. And by the way, the reason why you won't see supersonic footage on this video is because I am back in Turkey and my TV here is not compatible with my capture card, so I couldn't record any footage for it. Now, if you don't know what the fuss is all about, about a week ago, Sonic Team finally released Supersonic for both Classic and Modern on Sonic Forces, not via an update, but via an additional DLC. Right now, as of December 29th, 2017, you can go to your PlayStation Store, Xbox Store or Steam and download the Supersonic DLC for free. However, if you don't do this before January 23rd, 2018, the DLC will change into a $2 downloadable behind a paywall. And I have two issues with this, one being a personal opinion, the other being an overall problem as the concept that is supersonic and how it was established in the past 25 years that it has been available since Sonic 2. Let me be perfectly clear and you probably know this if you watched my ultimate review on Sonic Forces. I am no Sonic Forces hater, especially on my channel, you will not be seeing me taking any sides, I will just be pointing things at you. I will make it clear if something is my opinion and you can choose to agree or disagree with those. Tastes are personal and it is good to see other perspectives, as long as they are grounded in a logic that actually makes sense. I defended Sonic Forces on my review because most of the hate did not really make any sense in any logic. People who hated the game only came up with shallow arguments and couldn't back up most of their points. But it has to be reminded that being a blind fanboy is just as dangerous as being a blind hater and if the person who responded my criticism with no substantial argument and with varieties of it's just my opinion or if you say so when I was actually talking about actual facts, concepts that have been strongly established 25 years ago and various other trends in the gaming industry as a whole I hope you take notice or you will be looking at the Sonic version of Battlefront 2, a fiasco so big that disrespects players so much that even an unkillable franchise like Sonic won't be living through. People can move on from bad games if they enjoy a certain series, that is why we survive games like Sonic 06 and Rise of Lyric. People however do not forget when and how they have been disrespected as a consumer. This can be as big as the gaming industry crash back from before I was even born, destroying multiple gaming companies, and such things are not only present in the gaming industry either, similar bubbles can be observed in tons of other industries as well. Or the result can be as small as shutting down a single studio, like it constantly happens over there at EA, killing multiple franchises along with multiple studios. And whether you like it or not, Sonic Team is the heart and soul of the Sonic the Hedgehog franchise. So my point here is being a blind fanboy can actually be more effective at destroying something you like than, you know, being an actual hater. And certain things have to be criticized if a company oversteps certain boundaries. So with the long background on why the current situation is actually dangerous, let me start with my personal opinion. You're welcome to agree or disagree with this one. Unlike the next one that I'm gonna talk about, this is just my perspective on things. This is not even about the DLC coming behind the paywall. This is mainly about the fact that Supersonic is unlocked via a DLC and not via an in-game achievement. Ever since Supersonic came to be, he was unlocked through certain achievements. Most commonly, it was completing the special stages. From time to time, he was also hidden behind 100% completion, uh, which is a tad bit too much if you ask me, or behind the story completion like the adventure games. The fact that Supersonic is now unlocked via a download rather than a certain accomplishment heavily takes away from the fun for me. Supersonic has always been a reward. The main appeal of Supersonic for me was that it was a sign that I achieved something, not that he was slightly faster or jumped slightly higher. Heck, in certain cases those can even count it among the negatives because Sonic becomes so uncontrollable. I like being able to say I unlocked this and I honestly do not enjoy having the opportunity to say I downloaded this 
much less having to say, I paid for this, if I tried getting it after January 23rd of course. But that is just my opinion, maybe you just like blasting through stages with a yellow aura and the way you unlock it is completely irrelevant and that is perfectly fine. But the actual problem, that is not based on opinions but actual facts and trends, starts on January 23rd, 2018. Whether Supersonic is unlocked with the push of a button or through a series of challenges is not a problem in the grand scheme of things. It is a feature after all, and if somebody is looking for challenges to complete in 2017 and onwards, that is rarely an issue where you have tons of trophies available to unlock on the various platforms you can play the game on. The problem starts when you take a feature that has been free and part of more than two dozen games without an additional cost and go ahead and put it behind the paywall. Sonic 2, Sonic 3, Advanced Series, Adventure Titles, Heroes, 06, Unleashed, Rush Games, Storybook Games with their own super equivalents, Colors, Generations, Lost World, even Sonic 4 episodes and tons of other titles among the spin-offs. Its functionality may differ, it can be used freely in every stage like Generations or the Classics, or only as the final boss in the story. The point is, Supersonic was there to unlock and to give you a super experience without costing you anything more than the game you actually paid for. And it becomes an issue, objectively, when you take an established feature and hide it behind a paywall. And then there are people out there who say, I don't mind paying $2 for Supersonic, or I don't mind supporting Sonic Team with additional cash, or you shouldn't mind since you downloaded it during the free period. To those people I say, are you an idiot? Those people who keep coming up with these excuses don't even realize the apologetic language they are using for a practice they know deep down is shitty and shady. In these pathetic and apologetic arguments, the keywords you will see are I don't mind or it shouldn't matter since blah blah blah. Both of these signify that even they can't refute the fact that this is an objective problem and that they try to justify it simply because they are not affected by it. Newsflash fanboys, the problem is there whether you are actively affected by it or not. You know what would be fine? Letting Supersonic be free and instead of that, charging for that Sonic shirt you designed for 99 cents. Or even better, charge 2 dollars for Episode Shadow. Sure, I'd be slightly disappointed that Episode Shadow is behind a paywall, but at the very least, Episode Shadow is not something that appears for free with literally every game and is established as a feature that this franchise offers for free with every single game. There's a fine difference between making people disappointed because you're getting additional content with a paywall and going against the expectations of people that you established throughout 25 years of your existence and effectively playing with their personal trust. At the very least, Aaron Weber came out and acknowledged they are hearing the feedback about Supersonic and that he is passing them on to the devs. Now, we don't know the specifics about the feedback, but I really really hope that Supersonic behind the paywall is one of those criticisms. And before I end this video, I have to stress this out once again. Being a blind fanboy who doesn't let anybody criticize anything about the thing they like is just as dangerous as blindly hating something. If there is something to be criticized, whether it is your opinion or an actual factual problem not related to your own personal tastes, raise your voice. And most importantly, do it in a constructive way. So the people in charge know where you are coming from and the devs and designers can make the game better for everyone. I hope this video shines some light as to why Supersonic DLC behind a paywall is a problem and I hope we can all make a difference in the long run by telling them that we don't appreciate and why we don't appreciate it. But with that said, you can find me on facebook.com slash gamertalk and on twitter at gamertalk95. Please do like and comment and spread the word. Subscribe for more on Sonic and many others and if you really enjoy my content, do consider checking my Patreon on patreon.com slash gamertalk. I'll be seeing you with more regular content after the first week of January. Now, let's see how long this video will take to upload with my shitty Turkish internet speed.